Hello everyone, welcome back to Nancy Said. In this video I'm going to show you how I did the chain stitch to create these embroidered flowers on these gloves here which I've called the coastal gloves. They're done in iron weight yarn and I'm using a double knitting uh, embroidery yarn, any double knitting yarn would do. So we'll start by um, working a daisy at the top of this stem here and you'll want to secure the yarn inside just to get started. You want to anchor that in place. And then come out from the bottom, right out on top of the stem, like this. So we're ready to go. I hold my the yarn just to the left because I plan to put a petal shape like that on top here, about three rows high. So holding that to the left, insert your needle in and up where roughly you'd like your petal to be and wrap the yarn around the needle like that. And you can already see it's starting to form its shape and bring that on out with the needle wrapped so that it's caught. And then put the needle just above that loop back down in like that. And at the same time, come back out where you started at the top of the stem, because that's going to be our center. That's where we need to be for all these petals. So bring that all the way out. I recommend you don't pull too tightly there. So there's one. I have roughly 10 or 11 or sometimes 12, you know, don't be counting now. <laughs> you can't afford to be too precious, especially because it's a flower and they are organic. You can be precious if you like, I don't mind. I am just not that fussy. So repeat the process all the way around. In at the center and up where you'd like your next petal to be. Making sure that this is wrapped around the needle. Bring that on up. And then back down in. And bring it up again at the middle. And that'll catch that and get you started again. So I sort of, in, in my mind, I thought I'll do these like the dial, the numbers on a clock, and I'll start at 12 and I'll go to one, and, and I ended up having the most eccentric clock, but that might, might suit me in my world, but there was like 11 hours in the day, <laughs> and I actually need about 25. So I'll just carry on working around. always coming back out into the middle, making a slight adjustment if I have to, middle and up. Sometimes it doesn't work too well, you have to kind of play with it because it is onto knitwear and there's nothing really, you know, even about it. It's not like you're working onto a linen. It's harder because you can't put your thumb in, but the principle still applies. Always wrapping the needle around from left to right. Like that. Just make a little adjustment there as I wasn't happy with the length. Back down in, just over and up. Hold the yarn out of the way. So we're getting round and then I'm going to show you the, the French knots, which are a little bit of a kind of a cheat. Because they're not really French, but they are a little knot. They're sort of a mix between a knot and a bullion stitch. So 
and the leaves are made in exactly the same way. Uh, just there's only one, obviously one chain per leaf. I think I'll get one more in, potentially two. Will we try for two if I have enough yarn? Yeah, two. Always shooting for roughly the same length if you can, and I promise that uh, this will get better with practice. I'd also like to show you when I'm here how I fasten off. This is the last one, wrapped from left to right. Bring it back down into the inside and secure it the same way you started by just catching a few at the back. Obviously, you don't want to go through to the front and push that on in. And I do three because three is the magic number, right? You don't want it to get too thick. And you certainly don't want it to be going into the front. So just pick up a little and a little and a little. And I try to split the last one so that it's trapped a little bit more firmly. Don't pull too tightly. You don't want to distort the work at the front. Just trim that close. And I can assure you that's probably the best one I've ever done. None of them have come out quite as nice, so thank goodness for small mercies. So the French knot in the middle, and I'm using lilac. For some of the other ones, I used a, a dark purple. Again, secure in the middle. I'm just trying to pick up a little bit of that orange as well, because I really want to stay close to the, to the middle. And you don't want this coming out with wear because there wouldn't be enough to repair it. So definitely a few extra stitches here. And the key being how much yarn you use up rather than how many times you go over and over and over the same place. It really is about the length of yarn. So come up into the middle of your little flower. Now, you want to go back down in, but if you go back down in where you were, it won't stay. So almost where you were, not quite. Let's try to get some of the blue background. I've anchored that there, I've got purchase. <laughs> and I'm gonna wrap the needle again, left to right, four times. One, two, three, four. Don't be too, too tight. You want, there, you want to be able to bring the needle up. So the needle's wrapped four times. I'm keeping it close. As I put it up, I want to be sure that these stay to the bottom. I don't want them floating up as I pull. So keep your nail on it here and pull those up. And when I turn that over, just make sure they're close. Tuck those up, I'm pushing them up with my nail and bring the needle back down in to the bottom. And there you have your little French knot. As I say, a French knot usually has three, but I really want this to be seen. So I've used four and it makes it more of a length rather than a little circle. So that's why they're that shape. It's a little bit of a hybrid. And then again, secure on the inside. Comme ça. Don't know where the French comes in, you know. Sometimes I just get radio waves. There we go. Trim it close. And there you have your your daisies, your chains. I have a length of uh, green here in order to do one um one more leaf or two more leaves on this to match. And the thumb use the thumb hole to line those up. I also want to talk about the, the stitch itself. This is called waistcoat stitch and I have a little video brewing for how you actually create that with your crochet hook, even though it looks very much like stocking stitch and knitting. 
so look out for that and this rib is double crochets again so all double crochets throughout and they've just been worked into the back loops only this way you know short on the short um just every row double crochet back loop only and then you join it to form a cuff turn it and work this way round and round and these are skipped stitches for the thumb hole so they really are very straightforward using iron weight yarn and a five millimeter and a six millimeter hook five millimeter for the bottom and six millimeter for the majority of the glove with just a five millimeter for a couple of rows at the top so i hope you enjoyed that and find it useful and thanks so much for checking in i'll be back soon bye